You know how the Gatey Prime scene in Dune Part 2 is really unsettling? There are obvious reasons to blame for it. Fade Rotha's violent nature, the Baron's cold brutality, even the Harkonnen barbed men are nightmarish. I'm sure it's a cacophonous mixture of all these things, but there is one specific ingredient to the scene I want to call attention to. Legendary cinematographer Greg Fraser wanted the scene to feel surreal in camera, bright but off-putting at the same time. So in the same way the doorbells record creepy nighttime footage, he decided to not record with visible light and instead rely on slower wavelengths than the human eye is capable of viewing, which we call infrared. The airy cameras on set come pre-installed with optical filters that block infrared light, so they uninstalled them and reinstalled filters that block only visible light, and the results speak for themselves. But it does bring up a really good question. Assuming you aren't filming on Giddy Prime, it's worth exploring why infrared is blocked on high-end digital film cameras. Turns out sensors are capable of collecting a little bit of infrared light even if our eyes aren't, especially when using heavy neutral density filters. If you're shooting in bright light and you throw on a bunch of NDs, you'll get this. This shot is white balanced properly, and this Sackler bag is indeed jet black, but instead it's showing up as a strange reddish brown color. I'm recording on my trusty old Ursa 4.6K G2, a cinema camera that comes out of the box with an IR absorption plate and with IR filtration in the internal ND filters. I'm sure they're cutting some of the infrared light, but obviously not enough. This is a pretty common issue with red and black magic cameras, and there's only two ways to fix it. Both solutions involve adding infrared filtration, but it's really just a matter of where we want to install it. The first option is to add an IR filter, which we call hot mirrors, to our matte box or lens itself, which I've considered, but it wouldn't be ideal for a few reasons. I try to avoid screw-ons whenever I can, and if I wanted lens swaps to be fast at all, I would need to buy a ton of screw-on filters, which is both expensive and annoying. Adding an IR filter to a matte box is more standardized, but still expensive, and takes away a precious filter slot. Option number two is much more exciting. A second ago I was talking about high-end cameras like the Alexa having IR filtration inside the camera. It turns out there's a company called Raw Light that makes aftermarket hot mirrors that are installed inside cameras so that they work with whatever lens we put on automatically. And that isn't even the main benefit of installing one, because it's first and foremost an optical low-pass filter, or OLPF. If you've ever watched a video with a tight sequence of detail like brickwork or fabric, and you see this really bizarre aberration manifest, then you're seeing aliasing. It's a particularly ugly phenomenon that would take someone above my pay grade to explain properly, but all you really need to know is we don't want it. A great solution is an OLPF, and lucky for us, raw lights will drastically reduce both aliasing and infrared pollution because it also features a hot mirror as well as anti-aliasing wizardry. Installation is actually simple, and raw light includes everything you need in the box. I'll link raw light's videos below, they're much more granular, but essentially all you need to do is take off your lens mount, unscrew the old IR absorption plate, reinstall the OLPF, put a little tiny spacer on the EF mount so that it can still communicate electronically, and put the lens mount back on. That's it. Upgrading an existing camera might seem a bit odd to some, but I think we should be viewing cameras as platforms to build upon. Looking at whatever is newest and shiniest is really exciting, but it's also expensive and it puts you on that gear acquisition syndrome slippery slope. Investing in a camera that gives you a little bit of headroom to grow in is a much better call, if you ask me. Then you can make adjustments, you can install upgrades, and only when you've really, really outgrown that camera should you be looking for your next one. I love my Ursa. I plan on keeping it for a while, but in the future, if I'm ever using a Blackmagic camera, I'll be installing a raw light OLPF for sure. The value and simplicity of this filter removes so much guesswork on set, and I think that is more than worth the asking price. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.